Welcome into your PFF Draft Review, powered by PFF Edge and Elite. Today it's all about the Los Angeles Rams, who did not have a first or second round pick, Mike, but I think for what they were given, they picked a ton from rounds three through seven, yeah. and they added some valuable depth to a roster that you know looks like they're very close to a potential championship. They had to fill some holes. I, I don't normally love filling needs in the draft, but when you're talking about a number of picks, rounds three through seven, I think they, they filled the proper holes and did what they needed to do in this draft. Yeah, I don't blame them for where they're at. When you get to the third, fourth, fifth round, you probably have a lot of guys in your board with very similar grades. You probably have a lot of guys who, you know, you can go either way on. So at that point, pick the positions that you're going to need filled. You know, pick the positions that guys could step in and probably start or make an impact right away, and I think that's what they tried to do. Yeah, so it was all about some offensive line depth that they needed, certainly need some linebacker help, mm -hmm. and then edge rush. Maybe one of the worst edge rush situations in the entire NFL. To go with yeah. a great interior defensive line, though, of course, Aaron Donald, the great Aaron Donald, mm -hmm. you have to say it like that, the best player in the NFL, plus and Dominican Sue. Um, so let's get to it. They added some good depth. Don't forget rounds one and two uh, netted Brandon Cooks, who's going to be playing wide receiver this year, and then Sammy Watkins, second rounder, who's, who's now gone and played last year. Um, but let's start with third rounder Joe Noteboom out of TCU. There was a bunch of tackles in this middle round range that I think all – are, they're all projections at the next level. How does Nopum stack up to some of these other guys? Yeah, Nopum, definitely a projection, but in terms of the requisite athleticism, the size, the arm length, he checks all those boxes. But when you watch the tape at TCU, TCU is one of those programs where that the NFL off the line coaches complain about at the college level because they're not, they're not developing offensive linemen there. The concepts they're running in the run game are look nothing like the way they're going to be taught at the NFL level. So he's going to have a big transition going from there at TCU to the NFL, so he might not be a guy who could start right away, but like I said, has the athleticism and still was fairly productive there at TCU. Only 13 pressures allowed in 486 pass blocking snaps this past season. That's coming straight out of the PFF draft guide here with, you can get with PFF Edge or Elite. So there's something to work with here. And again, like we said, a lot of these tackles in the mid round, there's something to work with, but they have their flaws. That's why he goes where he went. Yeah, and then they go back to the offensive line well with Brian Allen out of Michigan State, a guy that's had uh, very productive seasons, mm -hmm. 88 overall grade in 2016, 86.5 last year. And uh, we're talking about a guy that's, you know, has that interior versatility at guard and center. Is there a perfect position for him as far as either guard spot or center at the next level? I think he's definitely a center of the NFL. I don't think his arm length and size is enough to where I feel comfortable putting that guard. But in St. Louis and the Rams, excuse me, Jesus, in the Rams scheme, what they do there is they ask their alignment to to run wide. They're not, they're not trying to move you off the line of scrimmage. They run a lot of wide stuff. They run a lot of stuff that requires uh, athleticism and you know technique over pure brute strength. And so I think that's a better fit for him. He just wasn't sort of a people mover in the run game. And when you look at Jonathan Sullivan, who's getting older at mm -hmm. center, it is a good position for them to be looking for. And, and uh, to back, go back to the note boom pick, left tackle Andrew Whitworth probably doesn't have too many years left in right. him and might not even. I worry about the last game we saw from him against Atlanta. He looked old real quickly. It was the lowest graded game that we've had from him in years. And that's concerning going forward because when it goes at the offensive line, when the knees go, it goes quickly. That's why O-line depth was so crucial mm -hmm. in this draft and also linebacker as well. They lost Alec Ogletree, who wasn't mm -hmm. maybe as productive as fans may have thought the last couple of years, but they still have a major hole at linebacker. May have gotten a two-down two uh, thumper, or maybe that's a one-down thumper mm -hmm. in today's NFL. Micah Kaiser out of Virginia certainly done his best work in the run game these last couple of years, needs to cut down on the missed tackles, can get after the quarterback a little bit, solid pass rush grade these last couple of years. Uh, but a lot of that's just, you know, it's hard work, you know, it's uh, pursuit plays. Uh, just a guy that I think might actually be able to see some snaps even as a fifth round pick and I, early in his career. And I will say this, it was a need even if they had Alec Ogletree on the roster. Him and yep. Mark Barron were not nearly as productive as their contracts would have, and you know, draft stats would have had you, you suggest uh, a season ago were sort of an issue, one of the biggest issues with that defense. So adding anything at linebacker can almost be an upgrade there from what they saw. And then their uh, fifth round pick, Obo Okoronkwo, maybe his maybe their best pick of this entire draft a guy that we had much higher on our draft draft board as more of a second round type of player a little bit undersized on mm -hmm. the edge but i think when you're running this wade phillips scheme you can afford a little bit smaller guy off the edge what'd you like out of oboe because he was very productive his years at oklahoma yeah i'm a big fan of him he's an extremely explosive player off the line of scrimmage and has incredibly good balance there at, off the edge i think he's the rare you know undersized guy with short arms that can actually hold up on the edge and not just be productive as pass rusher, but also play early downs and be a good run defender as well. Uh, I do think, 
uh, they don't really, like you've mentioned, they don't really care about length there in, uh, for the Rams. Last year they drafted Ewan Price, another guy who was very undersized off the edge. And a lot of teams s sort of lose their minds when guys don't have length. A lot of teams push them way down their draft boards. But I've never seen it as b being a huge issue. We saw Carl Lawson a season ago fall to the fourth round because he has 31-inch arms and is the most productive you know, edge rusher in that class as a rookie. So I think Okoronko has the ability to step in and start immediately for them, especially with that depth chart. There's absolutely a path to him playing right yes. away. I love that he went to the Senior Bowl and you know really dominated the senior bowl numbers straight out of the pff draft guide because we're the only ones that actually grade every single rep there he had seven total pressures on 15 pass rushing snaps at the senior bowl he's been solid against the run these last couple years also has experience dropping into coverage which is definitely an afterthought when it comes to edge rushers mm -hmm. but when you are in this hybrid wade phillips type of scheme you're going to do it every now and again it, it just adds to your value so obo a great pick in the fifth round love that also loved sixth round pick John Kelly, running back out of Tennessee, just runs really hard. Kind of reminds me of uh, Mark Ingram Light, the way he runs, you know, uh, violently through contact. Is that fair enough <laughs> on my fair. John Kelly call? Yeah, go, yeah. And then the rest of the draft is just a solid bunch of sixth and seventh round picks who had pretty good PFF grades, but I want to highlight one. Their last pick, it's Justin Lawler, edge defender out of SMU. I keep saying, Mike, even if they're not as athletic as you'd like, if you get guys that just did the job on the field, that's how I would treat my late-round picks. Not get the freak athletes who are unproductive football players. Get the productive football players, even if the athleticism's not great. And I know Lawler's testing is not ideal for an edge. No, yeah, he definitely ran above a four, se a five-second 40-yard dash at his pro day. You know, his, his change of direction number is about as bad as that as well. Just not a great athlete, but... The thing, here's the thing, he's already an incredibly productive football player. He steps on the field, on NFL field on day one, and you know what you're going to get out of him. Now, I think that has some value. Obviously, there's not going to be this incredible upside that people want to talk about with him, with a guy who's that poor of an athlete. But I think you can get a reliable backup at that position, which when you're talking about a seventh rounder, that's more than a lot of seventh rounders are going to end up being. And again, we talked about how poor the edge rush situation is with the Rams. Maybe Lawler has a path to getting on the field early 90.3 pass rush grade was the highest out of any edge defender in this class. He did it at a lower level, doesn't have the athleticism. I can't wait to see what he does with yeah. his low pad level and quick hands. I'm reading it right out of my scouting report here in the draft guide. So that'll do it for our Los Angeles Rams draft recap. It's all been powered by PFF Edge and Elite.